Hi everybody, it's Sword Sash Mass Tutor and today we're going to be dealing with this nasty little sucker which is the unit circle and all of those horrible angles and it looks horrible it looks like a numeric car crash but you are going to be able to do it in seconds well maybe not seconds maybe it might take you a minute or two but it's going to be really really easy and hopefully at the end of this video you are going to understand what the uh, cast is cut at certain the basic angles, this is applicable to O level and definitely A level and how to actually generate all of this unit circle and it's just going to make your life 10 times easier. Okay, so just a quick talk about the basic angles. These are going to be, well they just come up in mathematics all the time and um, for you guys who are doing, you guys who are doing A level then uh, when you come to use some of the more complex trigon trigonometric identities you'll be able to do stuff like find um, values of say 75 because you just use these two basic angles as an example and that will give you the 75 value you want anyway moving on this is the first bit of stuff that you're going to have to get used to and it's all based around your right hand uh, which actually there's a little thing here if you are actually needing to work out the stuff on your hand you're actually going to have to put your pen down if you're right handed but if not here we go First thing is we start to label, the remember the basic angles? Well, little finger, American's pinky, this finger 30, middle finger 45, uh, index pointing finger everybody 60, and then um, 90 for the final one. So this is, this is a demonstration and we are on the right hand. Okay. The other bit, and it's going to make uh, sort of sense in a second, um, is that we are always going to take the number we're going to generate and take the square root of it, and we're always going to divide it by 2. In other words, we're going to end up with that sort of fractiony thing. And the other thing is that anything with your little finger towards your little finger or on the little finger side, and it will all become clear in a second, is going to give you the sign of an angle and everything on the right is going to give you the cars or cause of an angle. Okay, so a demonstration. Demonstrations are always good ways of uh, showing stuff. So I'm going to ask myself the question, what is the sign of 30 degrees? Well, okay, uh, I get my right hand. Yeah, okay, just think about what I said. What's the other thing? Well, that was naught. Yeah, I don't want that. Well, there was 30. Okay, there. This is the new bit. I now reference, use, whatever you want to say, that finger. And uh, what I do, or what was the other thing I said? That I did? Oh, yeah, that's this side where the little finger is, is the sign finger. So I now count fingers. How many fingers are there? There are one fingers, or a finger. What was the other? So one. And what do I do? I always square root the number. And then I divide it by 2. Okay, well, we then simplify the square root of 1 is 1 and divided by 2. And that means the sine of 30 is a half. <laughs> yeah. Now, it's almost like you get double angle for free here because over on the other side, you'll have spotted that. I haven't even been asked this, but hey, here's me chucking out other values. This is the cos side, isn't it? And here's still 30. Well, how many fingers? have I got here? Well I've got three and what do I do? I square root that number, whatever number I get and I always divide by two. So does that mean that the cos of 30 is root three over two? Uh, well the answer is um, yeah it is. Now geek warning! Here's the geek warning everybody some of the more clever amongst you will realise that actually you can do this any way round on the other hand but I am just going to stick with the right hand for now. Now eventually you'll just be able to uh, whistle out these numbers but I'm going to go through that the procedure all the time just the thought process so let's look at the angle of um, 45 degrees okay well that was naught that was 30, so this is 45, let's get rid of those, 
And what did I have to do? Yeah, I referenced that finger. I'm not going to use that one. We're going to count fingers to the left and the right. Okay. And what's the other thing? Well, this was the sine side, and this was the cos side. That was the other thing. And okay, so the next thing was count fingers. Okay, so I've got two fingers here, two fingers. And I will square root the number I get, and I will divide by 2. So that must be the sine of 45. And on the this side of the reference line, if you want, is the cos side. And I count the fingers, and there's 2 there, and I will square root it. And I will divide it by 2, and that must equal cos 45. And it does, everybody. It does, it does, it does. Finally, just going to have a look at, um, well specifically 0 and at 90 because I don't want any confusion here on this and I'll do uh, 0 first so I'm going to ask myself what is the sine of 0 and the cos of 0 well here's my reference line and I'll just go through that procedure of well I know and this may sound I'm hoping you're getting it's basically everything this side even though the line is on my little finger it's still everything to the left of it how many fingers have I got to the left? Because that will be the sign. Well, there are no numbers, no uh, fingers to the left. Well, nothing divided by 2. Even if I take the square root of nothing divided by 2, if I go through the full procedure, is still 0, which means that the sign of 0 is 0. And on the other side, I've got the cos. Well, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4 fingers. And I take the number I get, which is 4 over 2. Square root of 2 is 2, and that's divided by 2, and that's 1. So the cos of 0 equals 1. Now, in a similar sort of way, we would do it for 90. I'm going to whistle through this one. Um, so we've got 90 is here. That's my reference line. And so um, everything to the left of the line towards my little finger is the sine and everything to the right is the cos and but it's the same sort of argument it's to the right of the reference line where well, the reference line just happens to be my thumb at the moment how many fingers have I got? 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, square root 4 over 2 which is 2 over 2 which is 1 so sine of 90 equals 1 how many fingers have I got to the right of the reference line, my thumb, where there are none? Square root it and divide it by 2. Well, that still comes out that square root of 90 is 0. OK, here comes the good stuff. Some of you might have already recognised that uh, this is actually generating some very familiar uh, sets of numbers here. So um, let's just go through one of these and we'll take um, the angles around the uh, 60. OK, so... Uh, 0, 30, 45, so that is 60. I reference that line up, and I know everything that side of the line towards my little finger is the sine. So it will be the sine of 60, and everything to the right of the line towards my thumb is the cos of 60. Okay, so what did he say to do? Count the fingers. 1, 2, 3, and square root it, and divide by 2. Count the numbers to the right, which is 1, square root of 1, because I will square root the number, divided by 2, or square root of 1 is 1 over 2. And, hey, seen it? Here's 60. Here's 60 here. And look at the sets of numbers we've got up here. They're exactly the same as here. Just by using your hand, we've generated some of the numbers associated with the unit circle. Now, you will have noticed that the format for a unit circle is actually, uh, the coordinates are given in the terms of cos, well, it's got this thing up here, that's theta, everybody, but it could be x, uh, but it's the cos of the angle. That's all it means. 
hang on, and it's cos theta sine theta, which is the x and y coordinate of the point. So for our example of 60, that means that that point there is at the coordinates um, x equals a half and y equals root 3 over 2. I've just gone in here to this uh, part of the unit circle because that's what this is, it's the unit circle and this is the way that you can orientate yourself and you'll see I've put a yellow um, cross down here to mark the coordinate 1 and 0 because the radius of a unit circle, the radius at any point is length 1 unit that's why it's called the unit circle and when we do our um, calculation with the hand we have to bear in mind that the unit circle, uh, I'll just sketch one here, the angles are measured anti-clockwise from here, so they're measured this way round. That's the way the angles are measured, and that's always the case in all of mathematics. Now that I know that, if I need to reference myself, well, what's the first angle that occurs here? Well, it doesn't. I suppose it's 30, really, but just before 30, sort of, what's the really first one? Well, it's the angle 0, isn't it? Then you can go through um, your routine. So that's the 0 on my finger. I know that the sine is to the left and the cos is to the right. Well, how many fingers is to the left of the reference line? towards my little finger where there are none. Square root of that divided by 2, well that's nothing. And the cos is 4 fingers, square root of 4 divided by 2, well that ends up as 1. Well I know on the unit circle I must always fall on the circle and I know that that radius is 1. So the only place that cos can be is here. So I get the cos of the angle first, that's it's not going to help. The cos of the angle first and then the sine of the angle because we worked out that cos of 0 is 1 which would be there and the sine of 0 well that's 0 and so that would be there and that orientates you to the fact that um, if you like that is the y-axis and that is the x-axis that needs a little bit of thought about it, but that's how to get yourself um, away on drawing the unit circle. You can then see that the, for the first, I shall have sort of missed one, one, two, three, four, five sets of coordinates, we can work out that really, really easily. So just by using our hand, we have generated um, all of these numbers. These all of these and this one. So if you like that was the really quick bit uh, we generated those numbers but in a unit circle um, what you can start to see is patterns so for instance this group of coordinates here is exactly the same as that group of coordinates there apart from the fact that you can see that in there, there's a minus one. But everything else, everything else is the same, all the same, all the way through. In fact, it becomes even more obvious when you realize that these are actually paired here as well. So in other words, although this is becoming a you know a set of lovely super duper colours, let's just get rid of them. Once I've generated this set of numbers here is completely mirrored or reflected, it's probably a better way of putting it, into these set of numbers here and this set of numbers here and this set of numbers here. That's about the numbers. How about the signs? Well, if we start thinking about it in x and y coordinates, 
Well, if I take this set of numbers here, well, everything was positive, wasn't it? The x-axis was positive, so the x-coordinate is positive, and the y-coordinate is positive, so the y-coordinate is positive. So what's what's changed here? Well, almost. Remember that mantra of take the number, square root it, and divide it by 2? We can see those echoes here. Everything, absolutely everything, all of these numbers, and it's the same for the numbers in the lower quadrants, they're all divided by 2. The only thing that you have to do is work out, well, okay, so I've, I've worked this out with my hand. I then realised that reflects about the y-axis and there's this pattern appears here, I've done all that, so what's the what's the numbers involved here in terms of plus or minus? Well, that's my x-coordinate and for it to be there it's got to be minus because this is the minus side of the axis. And you can begin to see that it's negative negative because the x-axis is negative and the y-axis is negative it's positive negative because it's positive x and negative y and that pattern starts to go round and round and round and suddenly you've got all the numbers there it's just getting the signs the right way round so this leads me on to what's called cast and this actually references cosine sine and also brings in tangent for you and here we go so um, what did we notice about um, all of these numbers here. Well, they're all positive, aren't they? So, in fact, cosine is positive and sine is positive. Well, I can tell you also, I'm not going to prove it, this is just a tell thing for you, that the tangent is positive too. Down in this quadrant, well, actually, we can start numbering these things, couldn't we? So, in fact, let's, let's work around. So, we're going to call that the first quadrant. First quadrant. I can abbreviate that. Instead of first quadrant, cosines, positive side, what I'm going to just say is that they're all positive. If I go to the, I'm going to change the colour, the second quadrant, well, what do I know? Well, I know that the Cosines are, well, let's have a look. Negative, negative, is they're all negative. Cosine is negative. Um, how about the sine? Sine, sine, sine. They're all positive. Sine is positive. And again, this is the bit of the tell thing here that tangent is negative also. So I can simplify that, and my simplification is that it's just sine that is positive in the second quadrant. Now for the third quadrant you see that everything is negative. So cos is negative, sine values are all negative, and just so happens that the tangent is the only one that's positive here. Get rid of those. And what else we've got? Uh, let's go down to the, so sorry, that was the third quadrant. And then let's go to the fourth quadrant. And we notice that, well, uh, causes are all positive. Cause, let's get rid of that, that was rubbish. The cause is positive and in fact sine and tangent both both negative. Now if I simplify that, lovely lovely people, I end up with this. That in the fourth quadrant, the fourth quadrant, cos is the only thing that's positive. In the first quadrant, all are positive. In the second quadrant, it is only the sine that is positive. And in the third quadrant, it is only the tangent that is positive. And that, lovely people, spells C-A-S-T, cast. That's it.
So you can, that is another way of working out pos positive or negative values. So just to round up for you, we have found an easy way of working out the sine of any angle, I'm calling it theta, and the cos of any angle. I've related that as to how you start generating easily the unit circle. And I've also introduced you to the concept of cast, which you can overlay onto that. And there's been a bit of tangent as well. I'm guessing that actually this bit here is your everyday. The other few bits are if you get heavily into your trig, um, your core level stuff and, and A level. But there we go. Uh, so look, thanks very much for uh, listening to this. This has been Saltash Math Tutor. Um, I usually say it, but if there is anything that I can do to help or any points you want to bring out, uh, make a comment, like it, follow it. I hope it has been of some use. Thanks.